Hi everybody, um, today I'm going to do my best to explain time signatures. Now, uh, time signatures look something like this. They're just uh, two numbers sort of stacked on top of each other. And uh, what they do is they, uh, they just describe the rhythm of a piece of music. They kind of tell you how it's going to be organized and, and how you should interpret it. Now, some of these are actually very simple and some not so much. Um, can get into time signatures like this, which are very strange, but others like 3-4 four or 4-4, four, four, there's really not that much to them. So I'm actually going to take you up through all of them as best I can, um, but today we'll just start with, uh, with some of the simple ones. So to get going, I want you to imagine a piece of music in uh, the very beginning, which is where you find time signatures. We have a uh, 3-4, and then I'm not going to actually draw out each measure, just kind of sketch it, but you get the idea. But to, to start understanding this, um, you can actually just read it like a sentence. So you, you would read this as, there are three of these in a measure. So obvious question is, what does this four mean? Three of what? So that, that bottom number there, it actually just represents a note. Okay, so if it were a one, it would represent a whole note. If it were a two, it would represent a half note. A four would be a quarter note. You kind of get the idea. An eighth would be an eighth note. And a sixteen would be a sixteenth note. So you would read this as there are three quarter notes in a measure. Now that doesn't mean there are literally three quarter notes in a measure. There certainly could be, but there doesn't have to be. So we could have a measure that looked like this, just three quarter notes. But it could also just be something equivalent. So for example, a half note and a quarter note. If you remember, a half note always equals two quarter notes. And it doesn't matter what time signature we're in, that's always going to be true. Or, say for this measure, we could actually replace that quarter note with two eighth notes. Same thing, a quarter note always equals two eighth notes in terms of length. So both of these are perfectly valid measures in, in 3-4. Um, however, we couldn't have something like this, a half note, two eighth notes, and a quarter note. That would add up to too much. That does not equal three quarter notes. So this would not work in 3-4. In so there's a couple other examples. Let's say we were in 4-4. Uh, we four, four. So a very simple one. We would have four quarter notes in a measure. Just read it. There are four quarter notes in a measure. So this would be a, a good 4-4 four, four measure. Um, could actually just have a whole note. That could be a whole measure or two half notes, something like that. If we were looking at something else, like say 6-8, you would read that as there are six eighth notes in a measure. Or that one weird one I showed you earlier, 15, 16, would be there are 15 sixteenth notes in a measure. Although we'll deal with the particulars of these later. So, say we're in 4-4, four, four, and uh, trying to figure out how you actually interpret this. How do you count out the beats here? And that's a pretty important question. So there's a couple different ways we could try to approach this. You could think that, okay, maybe there's two beats in each measure, and uh, a quarter note lasts for half of a beat, so we would count it out as one and two and. Uh, maybe there's eight beats in a measure, and each quarter note lasts for two beats, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, actually, either one of those kind of makes sense, but the, uh, the much simpler answer is just that there are four beats in a measure. Count it as one, two, three, four. Now, it seems like the obvious choice, but that's not, not always the case. Um, you may have learned, if you've read about this before or you've taken music lessons, you might have heard that this top number tells you how many beats there are in a measure. Um, truth is, that's true about half the time which to me makes that a pretty useless fact. It's like saying that uh, every human being is a male, except for half. 
mean, it's kind of a useless thing to learn. So um, I'm gonna insist on you not thinking of it that way. Um, you're gonna have to figure out how many beats there are on kind of a, a per time signature basis. But in this case, there are in fact four. So you would treat this as four beats in a measure and uh, each one of these quarter notes lasts for, for one beat. Um, now I'm gonna show you a few other time signatures where they kind of work the same way. Um, for example, three, four, kind of the same deal. Uh, three quarter notes in a measure, and in this case, we have three beats, so that lines up really nicely. Uh, let me think, there's a, a few others where this is the case, so like two, two. Remember, you read it as there are two half notes in a measure, so just like that. Um, and you would count this out as two beats, so it would be one, two. Or let's say you had uh, quarter notes here at the end, you would want to count it as one and two and. And I went over counting in the last video, so if you're not clear on that, I would check that out. Um, there's also, let's say, five four, which is a bit of an unusual time signature, but it does happen, especially in kind of more progressive music, I think progressive rock, metal. Um, in this case, five quarter notes. And you would count it out as one, two, three, four, five. Just like that. Um, now, there are others, other time signatures like six, eight, or maybe nine, eight, or again, that really weird one I showed you, 15, 16, um, where you would definitely not be uh, counting out six beats or nine beats or, God forbid, 15 beats in a measure. Um, 6-8 actually has two beats in it, 9-8 has three, and 15-16 we'll talk about later. Um, so in this case, you would not be thinking of it that way. And I'll talk about these in the next video, uh, but just want to kind of make you aware and really drive the point home that you do not want to memorize for four as four beats in a measure. Careful with that. Well, actually you do want to memorize four fours, four beats in a measure, but just remember that that's not always the case. It does not always match up with that top number. Okay, so one more point before I kind of leave this alone. Um, you might notice that time signature like two two, okay, you would have uh, two half notes. And a time signature like four four, you would have four quarter notes. But we just established that a half note is equivalent to two quarter notes. So you could actually have a measure in two two that looked like this. And if you look at those, they look like they're the same thing. You might wonder why bother having four four and two two? They look the same. Well, I told you you'd count out four four as having four beats. You count it as one two, three, four, and you want to count out two, two as having two beats. So you count it as one and two and. But still, what's the difference? You're not gonna actually count out loud when you're playing this, so, you know, what, what does it matter? Well, the difference is the way these two time signatures feel, the way they, the way they come out sounding. Um, if, you, if you play like there's four beats in a measure, that means that each note falls on a beat, or at least, this particular measure, each note falls on a beat. And since it falls on a beat, it becomes a bit heavier. It has this sort of accented feel to it. Whereas over here, the first note falls on a beat, and so does this one, but these two don't, they're on what we call upbeats. So in the case of 4-4, four, four, you'd be playing 1, 2, 3, 4, whereas in 2-2, two, two, it'd be 1 and 2 and. And these two notes are somewhat heavier than those two. So it actually really does change the way this, this music feels. And it might seem a, a little bit kind of nebulous at first, but it really does make a big difference. So kind of listen for that when you're playing or when you're, when you're listening to music. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, if, if those time signatures felt pretty easy, good. Um, the other ones get a little harder. So uh, kind of prepare yourself. Um, but we'll leave those for next time. In the meantime, um, questions and comments are, you know, always appreciated. Um, I also been kind of as a side note, I've been thinking about doing a, a kind of a Q and A type of thing where um, just kind of answer some random questions that don't 
necessarily fit into a video. So if you have anything like that, just kind of music in general or, or whatever, um, let me know and uh, I'll think about trying to do that sometime soon. Um, but yeah, thanks very much and uh, I'll, I'll see you next time.